Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Once more I've stolen a pattern from over the pond and today I'm going to demonstrate how to tie a balanced leech. And for those in the UK I know you're wondering what the hell is a balanced leech. Well if I invert my vise and I pull the dressing down you'll note that the eye of the hook is about a third of the way back from the head of the hook. And that's what we call a balanced leech and if I get a chance I'm going to put it in the swim tank at the end and see how it swims. So without further ado let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H450 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a medium wire and it's in black nickel. Now, the thread I'm going to be using today is from Simplify. It's the classic thread, waxed at 6 to and as you can see, it's a black thread. First thing I'm going to do is get lots of wax onto this thread. Now, what I'm using to create the extended body of this fly is some straight dressmaker pins, and I've already taken one out. And what I've done is I've snipped off the end with a pair of pliers. I didn't want it as long as it was. I'd end up jabbing myself in the finger. And I don't want that. Now, I've coupled that with a Hanak 3.3 countersunk tungsten bead. And it's just a plain gun metal. And the first thing I'm going to do is just above the bend of the jig hook, I'm going to get a bed of thread down onto my shank, like so, and then I can come back up. Remove my rat's tail, and then I can bring my dressmaker's pin with the tungsten bead attached, and what I want is approximately a third of the hook. Don't want it too long. And you'll notice that I've cut a little slant in the pin, and this is just to aid the step down when I come back to coming onto the shank. So I'm just going to catch that in, like so, and then I can come all the way down. Try not to catch the tip of your hook like I've just done. And then all the way back, I'm going to just put a couple of turns right in at the end, and that's going to help me with my marabou tail. Uh, a little bump of thread like that just helps with tail furling on the hook. So as I come back up, I just want to maybe straighten up my pin a little, and then I can come all the way up. I'm going to come underneath the pin at this point, and capture onto the pin. I'm just holding this in place while I get a few wraps of thread up to my tungsten bead. And what I want to do is just make sure that I've got enough bulk of thread as to hold that bead in place. I don't want it sliding up and down on the pin. Now, the great thing about the internet nowadays is the ability to share patterns, dressings and flies. And uh, when I asked over the holidays about patterns from America, this one came up quite a bit and I thought, balanced leech, what's that? I've never heard of a balanced leech. And uh, we have bunny leeches in this country, but we've not got anything quite like this. So I thought, I'll have a look and then make an attempt at my own version. Right, I've come to the back of the fly now and I'm fairly content that that's in place and the bead's not going anywhere. Next thing we've got to do then is uh, add some tailing and I'm going to be using the Comp Candy uh, Blackjack Marabou. I've got a feather out the packet if I can find it and I want a healthy pinch so usually I take from my thumbnail to my knuckle I'm going to take a little bit more than that today and I'm just going to bring it all together like so and I'm going to remove these white bits over my waist bin. Then I can dress that up. And what I want to do is try and catch it in 
just where it steps down here. I don't want to come up and bulk up this area anymore. Just in this area here is where I want to catch it. So before I do that, a little bit of wax just to help secure it. And then I can bring it round like so. So I'm going to get a nice long tail. It is uh, to imitate a leech, which is a uh, if any of you have ever seen leeches in the water, they're uh, quite a, a large, formidable creature. So I'm just going to take away some of the marabou tail. I'm sure it's maybe off the camera at this point, actually. It is a, is a large fly. So next then, I've got a little bit of um, crinkle flash here. It's silver. You can use um, whatever colour you see fit. I think silver works well with the black. I'm going to catch it in about the length of the tail on my side, first of all, and once I've got it in place, I can then come down your side with the remainder. Just hold that into place with my fingers, hopefully it's right, I will check in a minute. Yep, that will do the job, and while I'm here, I'm just going to remove my excess. And that's looking pretty good so far. Next then, I'm going to wet my thumb and forefinger, just damp everything down, makes it a lot easier to work with. And I'm going to come back up the body to where the bend starts on the shank. And I'm just reeling some thread off now. I'm going to come up and create a dubbing loop. Now I rarely do this uh, because I like to split the thread. I just find it more convenient and it's easier to work with. But on this occasion, I've got quite a lot going on and you can't really do it by, well, you could do it by splitting the thread, but I think it would be very awkward. So I'm going to bring that thread all the way up to approximately a millimetre or two before my tungsten bead. And I've got my loop here in my hand. Now I'm going to use a dubbing loop spinner and I'll just attach that to the loop. And what I'm going to put in that is from Nature Spirit. It's called Emergence Dubbing. And this one is called the Black Blood Leech. So, suitable name. I've already taken uh, some of the dubbing out of the packet and I've kind of flattened it out, if you like so that it will fit in my dubbing loop. I can then dress that up. You can use a clip, which I've got to say does make it a lot easier, but I'm always up for a challenge. And I'm going to just fit that into the loop. And it's worked out pretty good for me. So next, I'm going to spin up my dubbing loop again. It might just be off camera. Uh, I could have done with a wider angle, maybe for tying this fly, uh, but I'm just spinning that up and once I've got it to the consistency I want, I can then come in with my fingers, remove quite a bit of the bulk and you can what you'll see is you'll get quite a lot of dubbing back, don't uh, discard that, just make sure it goes back in the packet and it can be used for another time. So. I've got it how I want it, my brush, and what I'm going to do now is I like to keep my dubbing spinner on my rope, it's just easier to work with, and then I'm going to bring my brush up the shank of the hook. Now just take your time, each time I turn, I'm just bringing my thumb and forefinger over the the dubbing to pull it all back and just making sure I get good coverage of that body. Yeah, I've never seen uh, anything in this country quite like this actually. So it'll be interesting to know if anyone in the UK who's watching uh, has used a balanced leech themselves. Let me know in the comments section. So as I get up to the eye of the hook, what I'm going to do is slip the dubbing underneath that. And then I can carry on 
up the length of the pin. Now you've got to make sure that when you do this, you've got enough dubbing as to cover the length from the butt to the tungsten. Uh, a little bit of excess is not a problem. A little bit of shortage uh, can become a problem. And mine's has worked out just about perfect actually. So I've brought that all the way up to the tungsten bead. I can then lock it in place with my tying thread two or three turns and then two or three turns in front and I can then remove that section. Now that's looking pretty good and what I'm going to do is just get another few wraps to make sure it goes nowhere. Now with this uh, blood leach material what I'm going to use is a little wire brush that I've got here. You can pick these up from pound shops they're really good and it really just pulls out that dubbing gives it a really nice look to the body be careful not to catch your tying thread with a wire you don't want to snap it but that looks pretty good so I've got that how I like it now uh, my version of the uh, the balance leech if you like is going to have a hackle and all I'm using is uh, this hen cape. I've selected a feather already. And very often I'll tie in from the tip. But on this occasion, I'm going to tie in from the stalk. Now I've cleared a little bit of room already. I want to leave a couple of millimetres to catch in. And before I dress it up, I'm going to add a little bit of wax. And then just catch in your little bit of tag there. Now, despite the length of this feather, I'm going to use some hackle pliers. And the reason for this is I want the hackle to be quite, quite heavy on the front of this fly. Just to give it that extra movement. Now, as it goes, this is a, a good quality hen hackle actually. So it's not splaying out particularly well. So I'm just using my fingers to agitate the fibres to make it spin out. And I've used nearly that whole feather there. And what I want to do is trap in the tip section. Once you've got one turn in, you can let go of your hackle pliers. And then I'm going to bring that around the front just to make sure I've got it secured in. Then with a pair of scissors, I can come in and just remove the tip of the feather. Now, you can be tempted just to snap that away, but very often if you've got good quality feathers, they're very strong and it won't snap away. You'll pull out your hackle, it'll unfurl, and you'll have to start the hackle stage again. So, thumb and forefinger damp down, pull everything back, And then you can build up a little wrap in behind the bead, like so. All that remains to do is finish off. I'm going to add a little bit of UV resin to my thread. And then come in with a whip finish tool. Like so, nice and tight, then remove the thread. Just cure that off and there you have a balanced leech. Now, as I said, I've not seen anything quite like this in the UK. Uh, if, if you're a UK angler and you use this fly, I'd love to hear how you get on with it. And there we go. Thanks to my US friends for the inspiration. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you got some value out of the video, please don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.